Since arriving in Hong Kong, these designers have had a jam-packed schedule. But now is the time they've probably all been dreading, which is the judging. I'm here at Asia's largest fashion event, Centre Stage, to catch up with judge and fashion director of the R Collective, Denise Ho, to find out what she is looking for in the winning collection. So Denise, this is going to be the grand prize for our fashion designers to design a collection for you guys. Yeah. So what are you looking for from the designers? We're not only looking for talents, we're actually looking for someone who can transfer waste into something very relatable to fashion nowadays. Have they done enough research to make sure the material they're using for is truly, truly good for the environment? And I think construction for us is very, very important because obviously it's not finished properly, then you know your clothes will break very easily and that means it goes back to the bin again. Joining Denise on the judging panel are Claire Press, Sustainability Editor-at-Large for Vogue Australia, Roger Lee, CEO of TAL Group, and co-founder of Fashion Revolution and the queen of upcycling, Orsola de Castro. The opportunity to present in front of these amazing judges is an opportunity of a lifetime. Just to be in a room with them is a humbling experience for me. Super nervous, actually. <laughs> I feel weirdly calm, so let's see how this goes. I start marking on the side. The judges give designers scores based on creativity and originality, sustainability, marketability, and workmanship. Okay, beautiful. Should we start? My name's Tess Whitford, and my collection's called Juxt. I wanted to create something that's really different to what's often seen within sustainable fashion. We were only given three minutes to pitch. It really made you focus on, like, what's the most important parts. For me, being a sustainable designer means being a bit of a rebel and not being afraid to um, sort of break the mould and try new things. By repurposing what the mainstream culture has disregarded, I wanted to um, find stuff that was easily accessible in thrift stores. So menswear shirts, workwear, tablecloths, and so on. The way that you chose your fabrics in terms of upcycling is ideal. You went where you knew you could find as much as you want. She went straight for the right fabrics, straight for the right uses for them. But I didn't think that it was a fashion collection. I thought her knits were great. If it was just on sweaters, she'd win. Lucia from Spain. I thought she was delightful. What nice energy. I yeah, liked the way she explained her vision. I always try to show how I feel in my collection and I started developing uh, some different techniques for showing my, my frustration with the fashion industry. I made liquid silicone threads. I also made origami pleats, some patch needle and hand painting. It felt very experimental. Yeah. And I used also a symmetric um, shapes to so that I was feeling unbalanced. A lot of tests going on, like she's trying this and trying that, and then she but put then it together. It was a really, really um, coherent Nicely collection. Finished. Me and the other judges definitely have different opinions. While working on this, I was inspired by the documentary Chasing Ice, which is about the climate change. Uh, I didn't really understand the concept. I liked it. So he had been inspired by collapsing ice shelves and then his concept was about collapsibility of the silhouette. I was able to manipulate faux fur from the curtains. Oh, so you've made this faux fur effect from strips? Yes. That's interesting. That's interesting. He was a great sewer. Yeah. What do you think about Sarah Jane? I thought that Sarah Jane was also such a beautiful sewer and it was nice to see and I did think she was a bit nervous. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the limitations that I've that have inspired um, for me to create this collection. Um, and I moved to Tokyo. I lived in a sh tiny little shoebox. So I started thinking about creating a capsule collection for, sorry, I, th I started thinking, oh God. Honestly, <laughs> um, I think I bombed it. It's, I, I'm really terrible. My nerves just get in the way. Thank you. I think it's really polished and beautiful and your make is so nice. Well done. Thank you. Her skill as a craftsperson was 
the best. I agree. I think it was a lovely that it could do well in a little atelier. Yeah. Again, to me, it didn't speak fashion enough. Tess from Australia. The look's not my look. The, the depth of thinking, very deep. This process was more about pushing the limits of zero waste pattern cutting and really seeing what I could achieve. My most complex garments, I used conventional blocks and then jigsawed all the pattern pieces together. You scale this, it's going to cost you a bazillion million to sew it because of how many pieces. So what's yeah. your solution um, on that in terms of actually I, commercial production? I really like the concept of looking into using AI software programs that can really scale this. Yeah. And I've started discussing that with, with some people. Her zero waste technique is impeccable. I've mm -hmm. never seen it done that interestingly. Do you feel like the technique has gone deeper than before? Totally, completely. I recycle like the bridal wares and also the obi and kimonos. I use the tree bark, it's called the bark lace. I use tree bark as a raw material through the repeated hammering to stretch the fibers. We can get a very beautiful natural lace look, uh, bark fabric. The bark lace was innovative. I admired the fact that he'd used different sustainable techniques yeah. and fabrics. He was consistent. Ganit from Israel. Uh, my project started from the old shredding machine. My, in, I found in my father's garage. I'm taking the fabrics that no one will use again. I'm turning it to a raw material that I can make new textile. Have you considered how your client will be taking care of these pieces? Um, Have you washed them yourself? Not yet. Okay. So you have to have all of the information for the aftercare of the garment that you're producing. The prejudging, it was hard actually. What are the sustainable properties of liquid silicon? Why did you choose it? How would you care for it? Okay, there are many kinds of silicones, uh, mostly... I wasn't expecting that hard questions, for example. Have you thought about how the weight of the garment, when someone wears it? How will you grade this? What about these materials? What's their origin? <sighs> Sorry. The yarn from the knitwear. This is 100% uh, recycled plastic bottles. And I did the knitwear, so like fully fashioning to Sorry, shape. Sorry, which one is the plastic bottles? So this is made from 100% recycled plastic bottles. I'm really, really sorry, but anything made out of plastic has such a negative environmental impact yeah. as soon as you attempt to wash it. It essentially reacts like a polyester, yes, so exactly, it's an easy I'm care. When you, no, when you wash polyester, it right. sheds millions of microfibers yeah. into the ocean. You can also get guppy bags in order to like... Guppy bags are not okay. effective anymore. For me, there is a fundamental lack of research problem. In general, they all lacked a lot of research, I found. But I liked her way of pushing limits a little bit more than other people did. I created this very heavy lace from the very tiny pieces that I couldn't use for anything else. How long did it take you to make this? About two weeks. Design-wise, the first piece that took her two weeks was beautiful. I wouldn't say what I have now is a solution, but let's keep learning from our mistakes and keep going. It can be a little bit overwhelming being a sustainable fashion designer, definitely. Especially as we create more like solutions, they often seem to like create new issues. Not one person has the right answer. The only way that we can achieve some sort of change is if we learn from one another. I spent the last two years living in between the UK and the factory in Shanghai to try and understand further the manufacturing process. That was a really interesting experience and really informed the way that I've approached design going forward. For this collection, I use nylon for the project. I thought that Lindsay did some interesting things when it came to the upcycling of stockings and tights. We know that's a big waste stream. But knit on the body, whether it's nylon or not, knit doesn't sit. Mm. But that's a collection that doesn't take into consideration the physicality of the person that's going to wear it underneath it. I wanted to create a sustainable fashion that a consumer would genuinely want to buy and be encouraged to reuse. I did get the impression that this woman knows her customer and she designed for her customer. Did you say these pants are reversible? Yes, these pants are the same pattern as this. Oh, it's reversible as in you can wear in front and back? Yes, like oh. this one. So you can... I found her to be a very good candidate because I feel like her stuff is commercialized a little bit, but like it's very, very beautiful as a collection. Go back to Tess. 
Does she have the versatility to design something different? I don't think that's so. I think that's what she does. Actually, our collective is getting into zero waste, so that could be interesting for us. How about Jessie from Hong Kong? I love Jessie from Hong Kong. In this collection, I use collect objects like curtains and shopping bags, umbrellas. It's all from my home and I transform them into the pieces with added sentimental value. This is umbrella? Yes. Yeah. This is interesting. This can go run and run. That's my favorite use of umbrella. This is the socks. Socks. Is it? It's, it's all socks. the socks from my grandma, my mom, and cousins. The socks? Socks was better. <laughs> Completely brilliant. With visible darning being one of the yeah. coolest things in the world. Is it just he just stumbled upon waste and then mm. figured out how to use it, or he really understood? The only way that you can really understand waste is if you have the instinct of knowing what to do with it when you stumble upon it. Okay. He's got potential. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's so hard, isn't it? I guess, you know, the good thing is it does change when you see them. On really the worn and on the runway. You see like... them move. Yeah. Can't wait. Mm. Thank you. In the next episode of Frontline Fashion, it's showtime. The designer's hopes and dreams to walk down the runway at the Redress Design Award Grand Final. Seeing my design on the runway, it's insane. I mean, who does this? And the judges reveal who wowed them to win first place.